Um, I am currently the Vice President of the European Students' Union, um, even though it's a role I'm very new to. Um, I was formerly the President of the National Union of Students in the UK, um, where I was a part of founding an organisation called Students for Sustainability, uh, Students Organised for Sustainability, um, and it was a coalition organisation, an organisation essentially um, set up by students for students. Um, and were the one of the, I think to me, one of the most impactful campaigns that I was involved in and um, still am involved in in the sense that it's still running, um, was that we worked with young people um, from um, the UK Climate Strikers as a part of Friday's Future. Um, and we drafted the first ever bill um, that was presented to Parliament um, in the UK. And, and, and I was saying to Elsa, um, it was a year ago, um, February last year, and it, fe it felt like, it feels like it was yesterday because of how time <laughs> has just kind of felt like a lapse. Um, but to me, it was an incredible opportunity to work with um, young people for, from all across the UK um, and, and in every corner of the UK um, for them to develop a, um, a bill that looked like what they wanted to see um, and, and, and pass through Parliament. And I think it was incredibly important and vital to show that, um, and often almost always, like young people are, are, um, are undermined in the sense that they are, they, this, when, they, when they do, when they work in, 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 and become politically active, um, they're told, oh, well, isn't that, isn't that cute? Look at these climate strikers um, doing, um, doing action and doing some form of, of, of striking across, across, across the world. Um, but I think by this future, to me showed a, um, a level of resilience I've never seen in an adult um, mm -hmm. in the sense that thousands and thousands and thousands of children were walking out of classes, right? Like knowing full well that they might get in trouble um, and we're working together and organizing together in the sense that um, I remember I remember connecting up schools. So if there was a, if there was one principal that was um, um, like essentially like uh, punishing students for, for 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 campaigning, then what would happen is all of those all the those schools that are, are local would like send letters to that principal, um, condemning him and like putting things on Twitter, being like, how dare this principal um, can like essentially like punish these children for like their very right. And I think that was really powerful and 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 for me in the sense that understanding the, the the role that we that that, that we as, as young people hold in, in the state that we hold in our future um and so the bill for me um was oh, a a i mean for me it was it was it was the first indication that like actually like every single bill that should be that that is formed from now on um should have consultation with young people and it should be led um by young people but if anything should always 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 have young people um as a part of um as a part of those discussion because at the end of the day regardless of 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 the outcome they are the ones who are going to um pay the price for whatever is decided and whatever um bills come into place um but teach the future um is the campaign that um that we started um teach the future had some some asks so the first one the first ask was for the government to review its um systems in the climate education right so what are we learning um and and where are the faults the second one um was to ensure that every teacher um across the board had the ability to teach about climate sustainability um and the third one was for our schools and our learning spaces to be um just and sustainable in the sense that um they should they should all be carbon neutral um by i think the the, the year was 2023 and the um and a commitment that any new bills that are built from now on um are are going to be uh, built with the intention of, of them being climate neutral um and the final ask was there to be an endowment fund of of um for young people to continue to do climate work and climate education um and i think for me it's incredibly important that like as as young people we are educated in political education political education right now is is a, is a privilege in the sense that um and it, it isn't something that we are all privy to um and I mentioned this to Elsa, I think that one of the most powerful tools that young people have used, utilized, um, especially my generation, is the power to connect over um, the internet to, to make tools that were often almost always behind closed doors in the sense that they were impossible to access, have made them free and accessible, um, and also digestible um, to anybody that w wishes to engage with them and anyone that wishes to learn from them. I think 
from my perspective, and I have confidently said this in front of, um, I've been in the environmental sector for the last three to four years um, and have worked with some of the biggest NGOs, worked with some of the um, some very esteemed professors um, in the field. I've worked with, um, I've worked with some very, I guess, um, some very esteemed um, individuals in, in, in the field. Um, and I can say the most incredible people that I've ever worked with or have been young people. Um, and I think to understand their ability to um, understand the intersectionality between different experiences to me is incredible for them to understand um, and their interpretation of the world. And I think one of the most important things is that, um, and like um, Andreas mentioned, is that the education system is exist in order to um, completely brainwash us in the sense that like um, remove us as critical thinkers and um, really limit the way in which we see the world and the ability that we have access to anything and everything. Um, and so the younger you are, the, the more you have the ability to reimagine the world in a way <laughs> in which um, I can't even begin to comprehend, um, let alone somebody that's older than me. And I think, I think that's for that very reason, I think young people um, play such a pivotal part in like rebuilding um, and reimagining what, what is possible um, without restrictions. And I think that's so incredibly important. That's so powerful to understand. Um, but I actually wanna, I wanted to highlight something that was uh, mentioned by Francois in the sense that um, like at the end of the day, I think for me, for me, I've done a lot of work around climate education and I recognize that climate education um, is the solution to breaking a cycle that has um, existed in the sense that our education, like the reality is the people that make the decisions that make the most harm to our society are the most educated individuals in the sense, you know, that they're the, they're the parliamentarians, the, the researchers essentially. And so, and so actually like there is a fundamental system with our education system and it, and it will break that barrier. But I'm, but I think what we need to be careful in doing and often almost always when we have these conversations, which um, is that like the solution and in, in, in fixing climate change and uh, in, in climate change doesn't sit with young people. It sits with the people who are um, elected to lead. It sits with the um, people that run the big NGOs. It sits with um, the people that are, are, are that, that have a stake in big businesses. It sits with those individuals because the reality is we don't have time for the for the for the incredible um, 10 year old that is writing policy policy and wants to influence for her to grow up and become the prime minister to be able to make those changes. The, the impact of um, the climate is so happening, happening so rapidly um, and affecting lives right now as we speak that there, there, there is this, there's a sense of urgency that's almost always missed and undermined in addressing the issue that's at hand. And I think that's incredibly important when we talk about young people, because the reality is young people um, need the ability to be critical thinkers and have that space to analyze and, and, and reimagine their future. But as right now, as we speak, the future is being robbed off them. And I think that's incredible distinction to make in the sense of that where, where the line um, um, essentially um, lays in, 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 in engaging with young people and, and the power that they hold in changing their own realities. Um, and I think one of the things I wanted to highlight was um, the, I think it's the people, the, 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 the direct realities of um, climate change um, in the UK um, towards the, the early last year, it was the first time a coroner um, um, essentially concluded that a young girl, Ella, nine years old, died of um, air pollution um, because of the area that she lived in. And I think it's so pivotal when we, when we, when, um, we hear, when we talk about like, um, there are deaths happening in, um, in, in, in Bangladesh because of, because of floods or mudslides in Nigeria and people losing thousands of homes or, or, or even like the droughts happening um, in, in East Africa, right? And so, but th those experiences are so distant from home and we forget the sense of urgency because it's so far from our realities. But actually when it's happening um, and people, people's life expectancies are being um, reduced in the very areas in which we live in and the places that we grew up, um, and you can see that, I think that that should definitely create a sense of urgency. 